Welcome to the Rebecca Panapinto Project. Today, I am very excited to host Mark Filaroski. Now, Mark is a fail-forward entrepreneur who's excited about the next chapter of his career as CSNAP founder and CEO. At CSNAP, they're a mobile platform that helps to enable field work to be done more effectively. But Mark is also heavily invested in equipping and empowering the next generation of leaders. Some of Mark's past honors include the Mate Inc. 500, being on the list of America's fastest growing companies, and also being honored as a Nashville Future 50 who's who. Mark is an entrepreneur who absolutely does not stop, and I'm excited for you to hear more about what he and his team are doing at CSNAP. Enjoy the show. Mark, so great to have you. Great to be here. Thank you for having me today, Rebecca. Really, uh, I'm a big fan of the show and uh, excited to be here and talk a little bit about you know, tech, C-SNAP, and, and you, know, uh, you know, future technology. So. Love it. Yeah, you have such an interesting background. And as I was diving in and doing more research, it's like, wow, this guy just really does not stop. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> new project, new entrepreneurial adventure after entrepreneurial adventure, which is super cool. But today it's C-SNAP. So let's start there. What are you guys doing at C-SNAP and what are the problems you're looking to solve in the world? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. You know, if you look at, uh, if you look at what's been done, and uh, you know where the market's at and, and where the market's going. Um, you know, CSNAP was was born from this idea that um, you know ninety nine percent of venture capital has gone to the desktop workforce, and there is a ginormous two point seven billion deskless workforce in the world, and you know they're operating on software that was built for desktop. It's cumbersome. It's hard to use. Um, you know, if you're in the sun, if you're in the field, if you're on a roof, um, you know, it's very, very difficult to do data entry. And so we looked at the market and, you know, really started to delve into the idea that, uh, you know, how are consumers using technology today, right? What, what are the things that we go to when we stop working? So those things are TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, you know, we could go on and on and on. And the core, the, the common theme with those with those uh, platforms and technology is it's photo based, it's video based, and so CSNAP looked at this market and you know we we realized that messaging apps weren't built for work, <laughs> they're really not, and workflow needed a tool that works like these technologies in the market that are used on a social and consumer side, but we needed to bring that. Um, to, to help alleviate this pain between the desktop worker and the deskless worker. Real quick for my audience, let's further define this deskless too, because everybody is really familiar with remote workforce. I mean, I'm remote workforce. I If I could do my whole job off my mobile phone, that would be amazing. <laughs> Not there yet. Um, but for deskless with what you guys are doing, it's another step even beyond remote. So can you help define that for us? Yeah, sure. So... You know, we, we look at Desktop and we, and we looked at the whole market and we've done, you know, every study, every case study. We've re reviewed everything that, that's been written for the most part. Um, you know, there's 850 million workers, you know, in, in the agriculture space. Now, CSNAP's not, you know, geared towards that, but these are people that go to the fields, do their jobs and, you know, get back in the truck and go home. And so, you know, if you think about Desktop, the, they're not checking in, they're not, you know, sitting at home. Uh, you know, on their desktop, um, and and you know the, the the remote side would be I'm still working on a, in a desktop environment, but I'm doing it uh, where I choose, right? So you know this workforce could uh, immediately gain access to the technology, you know, deliver value, um, and I would say that that was probably you know that is still one of the one of the best you know parts of, of my job is that you know I get to work in the creativity side of product and and solve for these uh, problems. So really enjoying that uh, as well. Yeah. So people in the field, I think of UPS workers, I think of yeah, people on top of roofs, construction yep. workers. Yep. It's an iPad. It's it's things that can fit in their pockets. They yep. can throw in the truck that they're needing. So with those folks, probably the bulk of the user interface that they're used to are these social media platforms. So yeah. when you're going to them and talking about the user experience and trying to build something that is, you know, normalized and going to be accepted by them, is it leading with kind of a social media workflow? Or are you getting different input yeah. from them on really what the product looks like? 
Yeah, for sure. So I, I like to simplify because product development is very c complex, as we know, and, and we are using artificial intelligence at a convolutional neural network to make photos smart. Um, so certainly that's heady uh, and, and takes a lot of thought. But, you know, the users could care less. They don't want to do data entry when it's 120 degrees and they're on top of a roof and they're fixing your, your you know, your three tiles that blew off on the last storm. You know, they simply want to do in a tap, in a snap, proof of work, here it is, validate it. Uh, you know, people can associate with it very quickly. It's it's, it's something they're used to, they have, they have familiarity with it. So uh, that was one of the things we strive for here. And the benefit of the timing in which you guys are going to market is that a lot of this AIML is in place with the power of people who are already building cloud technology solutions. I think yeah. of, for me, I'm in the field from time to time, and usually I'm collecting expense reports in that scenario. Uh, so I use a mobile app for that. And funny enough, a few hours ago, somebody needed me to log into the portal version to double check something. I was like, I don't think I've ever <laughs> done this before. <laughs> right. I didn't know there was a portal version. Right, um, right. So I think that that means, hey, they're winning with mobile. And you know, it's yeah. a ton of technology that already exists. You're just packaging it in the right way to service yeah. these folks that are heavily underserved. So uh, yeah. I think it's awesome what you're doing. Thank you very much. And, you know, excited to hear you say that. Uh, it's, it, it, it really gives a lot of credibility to the team and, and what they've done here at CSNAP. And, um, you know, we've, we've just assembled a great team. They're very passionate about solving this problem and, and they show up every day and work hard. So, you know, we're excited. Um, you know, we're excited about what the future holds. How much are they able to work deskless as well? Is that a cultural shift? Yeah, we, you know, it's funny, um, you know, since our inception, I, you know, I probably go against the grain here or the norm and, and might get in trouble with other CEOs, but, you know, we don't clock in and clock out. You know, we, we really focus on kind of a results only work environment. Yeah. The best leaders I've heard from them that they get super creative to even find ways to incentivize roles that really don't have a lot of opportunity for variable comp, like the, the yeah. developers and the, you know, security Absolutely. architects. But if you can get creative and be like, hey, there still is this thing we want to accomplish this quarter. And if you do, there's some upside to it. Like, man, those yeah. people, it just surprising how motivated they get. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, if you don't have, if, if, you're, if your product or, or service or solution can't impact somebody, I, I think you miss, you know, the whole purpose of building an organization. You know, we get so methodical and we put people in boxes and cubicles and, you know, and, and if they can't deliver impact, you know, on, on a frontline level in, in our case, and, you know, but if they can't deliver impact to the, the, the end user, um, then I think, you know, the job's probably going to lose its luster. And then so you get a lot of turnover and, and et cetera, et cetera. So we really, uh, you know, we want everyone engaged. Now, you've had multiple entrepreneurial experiences. This is just the newest fun adventure for yeah, Mark. Yeah, you see, that's, <laughs> is this proof? Is, is that a, as a result? <laughs> nice. Uh, but as you've gone from venture to venture, what is it that has decided for you, like, this is the right thing at the right time? Has it been the people? Has it been the market opportunity? Like, what made you go, yeah, I'm all in? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to my detriment, I can be very convincing. You know, traditionally, that's my uh, it's one of my passions in life. I, I, I really enjoy working on problems, solving problems. I, I like people for the most part. Um, so so, you know, it's something I really enjoy doing uh, in the early days. And that that's kind of how these ideas, you know, come from. And and then I would say at a, at a kind of a tertiary layer, you know, I, I probably read too much. I'm, I'm a little bit of a bookworm and, you know, I. I think I have a problem. So if you have like an AA for, <laughs> for readers, then, then, you know, I need, I need to go. So something I go back to often. And, and, and I think this is a good vetting mechanism. If there's any young entrepreneurs uh, listening is that, you know, you have to think about commercializing your product as fast as possible. So if you can commercialize it, uh, then I would say do it. And if it becomes more of a science project, then, then, you know, that's your hobby work on it until you, you know, until you can find, uh, you know, at least a way to, to, to get paid for, you know, what you're doing or, or the solution or service you're providing. So. I don't know if you're familiar 
with Tom Bilyeu, but he says the success is not guaranteed, but the struggle is. So if oh, you can yeah. find the right thing, like you were saying, if you can find the right thing that's worth the struggle, maybe it is just a hobby or maybe you turn it into a business. But as long as you're enjoying the struggle and you know success happens or doesn't, you're not too hung up on that, then you're going to still be happy and fulfilled in what you're doing. Yeah. So since you're such a reader, I know there was um, some content you shared with me, which I wasn't familiar with from Mary Meeker and her, her blogs and, and thoughts around um, just how people learn and um, th this idea that really helped you think through more like this underserved desk deskless worker community. But tell us a little bit more about this article you came across and really that just situation and opportunity you're in that was like, hey, light bulb moment, it's time to go. So Mary, you know, Mary publishes an internet report every year and it's, it's, you know, it, you know, she sat on Google's board and, you know, has access to, you know, all the, basically all the data, uh, you know, and, and really has an insight view. And, you know, she was, she was talking to the, you know, Kevin, one of the founders of Instagram who said, you know, writing was a hack. We are in fact visual beings. And, and, you know, it, it really resonated with me, uh, especially with the, uh, you know, quantifiable data that Mary had around, you know, how fast photos are growing, how fast videos are growing. And, and so if you look at every trend, you know, maybe cloud computing is there too, but, but every trend is growing, but photos and videos was straight up. And, you know, it's, it's, again, it's, you have to understand how are the users using tech today? And, and, you know, again, it's, it's, you know, there's something, um, you know, it's, it's almost like we're learning through, um, it, it, you know, we can make a split decision on a photo, right? Where if you have to read a paragraph, it's 30, you know, it's 30 seconds. And, you know, what's funny about reading is you can, you know, two people can read the same two lines and come up with two different outcomes, whereas photo, you kind of have this concretive, um, you know, hey, that is broken or, you know, this is the issue. And so, uh, you know, that's what started our journey. That's what sparked the light um, and, you know, really lit the passion between us and our team on, on trying to solve this, you know, and, and, and really kind of push technology forward. Again, there's so much being done. There's a million repositories out there, um, but there's not a lot being done in and around smart photos unless you're the biggest player on the planet. You know, certainly Snapchat's doing it. Google's doing it. Facebook's doing it. But no one else is doing it. And, and you know, anytime that happens, I, th I think that's that's an opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for more people to get in the game, you know, build great products and, and get them out the door. So. And I think it plays into attention spans, too. Like my yeah. interpretation and thought of that was like the more we think about people are visual, like even a step beyond visual. Like for me, it's video and oh, like yeah. TikTok videos. It's shorter and shorter videos. Yeah. <laughs> of, and so it's also capturing attention spans and being able to even just get somebody to take a look or interface with your app in the first place. Because you can have an app, but if it's not intriguing, like it's never going to get opened. It's just yeah. the way the world yeah. works. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. Yep. So, Mark, now I want to talk a little bit more about the passion side of technology that you have. And that's around Web3, Web5, all these new emerging technologies that like aren't quite there yet, but people are leaving like really big jobs to go be part of the next, you know, web three startup. Uh, so what's your interpretation of what's going on in that industry and how you can be involved even through CSNAP? Yeah. I mean, I, I think the, the, the core of it's, you know, very interesting, you know, and it's almost this, this decentralization of power, right. Where if you think of, you know, typical organizations, you know, top down and, and those structures, a lot of these kind of web three through, you know, whatever Jack Dorsey's claiming as of today, you know, is the next web five or six, you know, um, I, I think that, uh, you know, what you're looking at is, um, you know, these, these ledger based platforms, you know, these transactional based blockchains where, you know, the, there is no hierarchy. And, and I think it opens, um, you know, in my mind, it opens some doors that I, I don't I'm not sure a lot of companies are doing. But if you think about it long term, you know, it opens up gamification. Uh, it opens up, um, you know, a ton of room for, um, you know, kind of uh, commission based or fee based or 
um, you know, almost, you know, building an entire career on the, on this ledger, right. Or, or this thing or this company. And so, uh, for me, that's very interesting. Um, you know, and I, and I do think we're, you know, I always say to founders who think we've done it all and every idea is taken, I'm like, we're at the, we're at the baby steps of tech, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're a few years in and, you know, if this is a hundred or 200 year, uh, you know, uh, run, we're, we're, we're definitely in day one, you know? And, and, and so, um, what's happening now is I think, um, you know, we're, we're very concerned about our privacy as users, as we should be, uh, we're, you know, um, we're, we're kind of tired of, you know, the, the, you know, internet Lords, you know, having access to all our information, but, but us not. And, and so I think those, those opportunities open and become very, very exciting. I love it. So I, this week, just, uh, yeah. I didn't buy it outright, but through a purchase I made was given my first NFT. Right. And it's just nice. for fun. It's not like, you know, I'm going to make money off it or right. anything. Like I'm seeing it all as, you know, it's gambling, a form of gambling right now, all the Bitcoin and um, things like NFTs, but it's fun and it's cool and it's exciting. So what's your perspective on how you interface with these things as they are like brand new on the market, but do show a lot of potential opportunity and that they're leading the next, you know, version of how we interface with tech. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm an art collector. You know, so that NFT resonates with me a lot. Uh, you know, I've been in the art world for so long that I know how bad the art world actually is. And so what I mean, you know, sometimes you buy a Peter Max and it's not a Peter Max or, a, <laughs> you know, but, but um, you know, so, so I, I think it's relevant. And, and I think it's the, you know, it, it is the future of, of how we uh, not only purchase art, but probably consume art. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, um, you know, as you mentioned earlier in our conversation, you know, as, in, uh, as attention spans shorten, you know, having a Picasso in your wall, it's great. But at the end of the day, do you want to look at the same painting for, you know, 10 years? I, you know, probably not. Um, you know, you want to have some, some, um, you know, uh, newness in your life. Right. And, and you want to, and, and so I, I think that, you know, NFTs bring in, a you know, an opportunity. So based on our moods, the art in the house could change, right? And tech can bring in these kind of things. And then you're, you're, you're owning a digital asset uh, in perpetuity that, that uh, you know, until you relinquish it. So you don't have to, it's, it's less, um, you know, it, it's less prone to say a fire or, or whatever. And, and so uh, I think, I think it's very interesting and uh, certainly a big fan. Yeah, and I'm not like a paper person. <laughs> and like my house already has sure. too much crap in it. That the idea of now collecting things in digital format, especially because a lot of my life is on digital, is appealing to me. I don't have to buy more like real, yeah. you know, storage unit space <laughs> to increase my collection. Yeah. It, it's digital. It's all managed within this, you know, really cool ecosystem that again I'm interfacing with consistently yeah. with different people. Mark, this has been such a fun conversation. I really have just one final question for you now, and that's around principles. And I want to hear from you. What is a guiding principle that you lived by to be successful in business? Yeah, that that's a great question. You know, I think over I'm, I'm 49 years old, so I'm not, I'm definitely not young. And I, and I think over the, your lifespan, you're going to hold on to some principles and some others. You're going to change. Uh, they'll become interchangeable. Uh, you know, throughout your life. And, and I think your priorities change, right? So, so your perspective at 20 is a lot different than at 30 and 40 and I can, you know, 50, 60. So, um, you know, my, my guiding principles, you know, um, mo most of who I am as a human come from my mother. Hmm. And, you know, my mother is just an incredible woman. She, um, you know, probably has the biggest heart in, in, in the world or must uh, because she constantly gives and, um, you know, so, so the first rule I've always lived by is treat others the way you want to be treated. You know, at the end of the day, uh, people don't remember how much money you make. They might short term, people don't remember, 
um, you know, your fancy car or, you know, your pretty shoes. What they remember is how did I feel in his or her company or their company, excuse me. Um, and, and, and that's really, uh, you know, a guiding principle of mine is, you know, if, if you can leave every conversation a little bit better, uh, if you can bring a little bit of um, something to the table every time, uh, I, you know, you're not going to go wrong in life. And, you know, people might win faster than you short term, you know, uh, some other ways. But but long term, um, you know, I can say, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't be possible for me to build all these companies without guys like Tom Black, Crom Carmichael, David Daly. I could go on and on and on who every time I want to build a startup, line up, give me cash. And, you know, Dave Morgan's another one, Dave Morgan Jr. And so, um, you know, th th that's very much guiding. In, in business, I, I've, you know, my, my, I just want to talk for a little bit on, on the business mm -hmm. side. And, you know, my, my priorities changed. You know, when, when I was younger, I was very, very tenacious, you know, and tenacious in the sense that I would kill myself to, you know, hit Inc. 500 and, you know, all these other goals. And I did that successfully. You know, I bootstrapped a couple of companies to over 10 million in revenue. There's very few people that, that do that. Um, but, but my priorities changed. And what I learned is that while it might take more time, a leader should invest in their people, right? In the team, in the people, in the process, you know, of building something. So if you want longevity, you know, my advice to anybody is go long. You know, we don't go long in this world enough. And, you know, that's probably something that I've learned, um, you know, as a dad, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So, so you're impatient with your kids, um, you know, early on, and then you learn, okay, you know, this is part of it and it's not going anywhere and you, ne you need real resilience and patience. And so I, th I think the same with startups and, and relationships and people, you know, and invest in, in the long game because you're going to get more uh, value right? You're going to, you're going to get more feel good. You're going to, you're just going to get more. And, um, you know, if you, if you can handle it all, then, then do it. So that, that's my advice. So. Oh, that's so sweet. Very encouraging. Well, Mark, thanks for coming on the show. Huge fan of all you're doing at C-SNAP. Excited to see the company continue to grow and excited to share it with the world. So thanks again for joining us and folks, you can find more information on Mark and C-SNAP at the link in the comments. Thanks so much.